hope you're doing well and of course Arnie hopes you're doing well too. Now in the world's freshwater rivers and lakes there are thousands of species of fish that come in many different shapes and sizes and most of these species are well documented and are regularly kept in the aquarium trade. But there are some fish that are simply too big to keep in any aquarium apart from public aquariums that only just manage to fit them in. But what is the biggest species of freshwater fish in the world? Now this question's a little harder to answer than most people think as some species such as sturgeon are known to be freshwater fish but actually spend a lot of time in brackish and saltwater conditions and it also depends on how you distinguish size because if you go by total length of the fish this will not give you a clear answer as some species are fuller bodied and more disc shaped and other fish are more elongated so the best way to measure size is by weight but there still isn't really a clear answer as to which species is the biggest as some specimens from the same species can differ in size drastically and this can be due down to food availability the quality of water in which they're found in and how many predators are in the area so no one really knows what the largest freshwater fish in the world is but I will be going through five fish that are thought to be the largest and I will be focusing on fish that are strictly freshwater only so I will not be including the sturgeons which would most definitely top the list and for our first species we'll start off in one of the largest rivers in the world the Mekong River. Now the Mekong River is the largest river in Southeast Asia and during its route to the sea it traverses through six countries including China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam and it's fitting that this giant river houses many species of extra large fish and in the larger river channels and tributaries you'll find the giant Mekong catfish. Now this catfish may look very different to the ones you find in the aquarium trade and one of the first things that strikes you about this species is that it's very streamlined and of course very large and this is because unlike many other large catfish it is a very active species and can usually be found swimming in the water column feeding on zooplankton and plants and the Mekong River is the perfect habitat for a giant herbivorous fish as a lot of the rivers are lined with floating plants that spring up out of nowhere and eating these plants and algae the Mekong giant catfish can reach colossal sizes as they can reach a maximum size of 9.8 feet and to put that in comparison the average size for a man is around 5 foot 9 inches and the average size for a woman is around 5 foot 4 inches so we really are dwarfed by the this freshwater behemoth. But not only is it large, it's also very heavy, as I thought to weigh a maximum weight of around 440 pounds, which is around the same weight of two giant pandas. But unfortunately, specimens this large are very rare nowadays, as the giant Mekong catfish is critically endangered. Some of these factors consist of overfishing, as well as the decrease in water quality due to development and upstream damming. And it's gotten so bad, in fact, that the Mekong giant catfish's numbers have decreased 80% in the last 14 years. And this has led to many countries banning international trade involving wild caught specimens. But the WWF, Mekong River Commission and Asian Development Bank are aiming to ensure that the environmental and social impacts are considered when developing more hydropower infrastructures. And this will hopefully mean that this plant eating river monster will stay on our planet for a lot longer. But for our next fish we move away from Asia and over to Europe as we have the Wells catfish. Now this fish is very widespread and can be found in Europe, Asia and the Middle East. And due to its size, it's almost exclusively found in medium to large lowland river channels and large lakes. And if you take a look at this fish's structure, its total length seems to be made up of 80% tail and the other 20% consisting of a giant head. And on this giant head, you will find a giant mouth. And this gives you a very big clue into what this species feeds on, as the Wells catfish is the top predator in any freshwater ecosystem where it decides to live. And not only does it eat other fish, but it's also known to attack waterfowl and pigeons. And this is well documented in a BBC documentary where a whale's catfish was filmed eating pigeons that were cleaning themselves in the water. And if you've kept large catfish before in an aquarium, you'll know that they aren't the pickiest of eaters. And some species will even eat dead fish, or in the whale's catfish's case, dead people, as it's unknown if whales catfish directly hunt humans, but some body parts and corpses have been found in the stomachs of some giant whales catfish. And surviving on a diet of anything it can fit in its mouth, it can reach a maximum size of around 9.1 feet. And because of this fish's attitude and feeding habits, a specimen this large is quite scary and may make you think twice about swimming in waters where these fish have been spotted. And even though they're not widely kept in aquariums because of their size, they can be found in many stock lakes for fishing purposes. And I personally know a few lakes near me that house these giants. But one thing they do have in common with some aquarium species is that they have an albino variant and this not only makes them easier to spot but has also led to some people keeping them for ornamental purposes. So out of all the fish on this list the world's catfish is definitely the scariest. But for our next fish we'll be heading over to South America as we have the Arapaima. Now the Arapaima can be found in the Amazon river basin and tends to prefer slower moving water in this area and this fish is very well adapted to this environment as it has the ability to breathe atmospheric oxygen. 
region. And one of the only ways to spot this fish in the wild is by waiting for it to come to the surface, where it makes a very noisy, distinctive gulp when taking in air. Now in the wild, the Arapaima's diet is made out of fish, crustaceans, fruits, seeds, and insects. And as I covered earlier, the Arapaima thrives in low oxygen conditions. And it's because many other species of fish are very lethargic in low oxygenated conditions. But as the Arapaima can breathe atmospheric oxygen, it can easily hunt down these fish and suck them up in one quick motion. Although this fish's size can be a little overwhelming, it poses little threat to humans. But it has a very strange behavioural trait, which means it can be very dangerous in some situations. As when cornered, this fish will blindly leap out of the water as fast as it can. And the Arapaima's head is made out of mostly bone on cartilage. So if you get hit by an Arapaima jumping out of the water, it could easily break some bones. And even worse, it could knock you unconscious. And if you are knocked out while standing in water, this could even prove deadly. The Arapaima can reach a maximum size of around 9.8 feet long. But unfortunately, like many other giant fish around the world, the Arapaima's numbers are dropping. And the main culprit seems to be overfishing. As not only are they harvested for their flesh, but designers have begun using the skin of Arapaima as leather to make jackets, shoes and handbags. And because they regularly surface to breathe, it means they are very easy to spot and thus very easy to catch. But fortunately, most of the Arapaima meat on sale today is from farm-raised individuals. And in 2013, Whole Foods began selling farm-raised Arapaima in the United States and they marketed it as a cheap alternative to halibut and Chilean sea bass. But hopefully more and more people will consider farm-raising Arapaima so that it gives the wild population a chance to bounce back. But now we'll move up from South America to Central and North America as we have the alligator gar. Now the alligator gar is native to the Central and Southeastern United States but can also be found in Northern and Central Mexico. And in these areas they can be found in a wide range of habitats from large lakes and rivers to sluggish tributaries. Now in the early days of the United States history, the alligator gar was villainized, mainly due down to its appearance and size, as they were seen as a very dangerous fish and not a very nice tasting one either. And this led to many alligator gar being hunted and destroyed, but their reputation couldn't be further from the truth. As alligator gar don't seem to be very interested in humans at all and focused almost all their efforts on eating other fish. And on the diet of smaller fishes and crustaceans, they can reach a maximum size of around 10 feet long and can weigh up to 350 pounds. And not only is it a very large fish, but it's also a very old fish too, as the alligator gar and many of its family members have been on this earth for around 150 million years. And just like the actual alligator, they have changed very little in this time period. And in modern day America, the alligator gar seems to be faring a lot better than it used to, and their numbers are constantly monitored and they are protected in some areas. And because of its size and weaponry, its only other enemy apart from humans are actual alligators. And it's another large fish, but I'm not quite sure it's the largest. And for a final fish on this list, we'll move back over to the Mekong River, as we have the giant freshwater stingray. Now freshwater stingrays are very popular in the aquarium trade and the two most common species are the black diamond stingray and the matoro stingray. But these are both found in South America, whereas the largest freshwater stingray is found in the Mekong. Now this fish isn't only found in the Mekong, as it can also be found in parts of Indonesia. And out of all the fish on this list, the giant freshwater stingray has been the hardest to find any information about. And this is because even though it's very large, it's very rarely spotted, as it tends to dwell at the bottom of the Mekong, where it hunkers down in the sediment. And in the murky depths of the Mekong, the giant freshwater stingray preys on smaller fish and invertebrates. And this fish can reach a maximum size of around 6 feet across the disc and can weigh an astonishing 1300 pounds. And to put that in perspective, that's around the same weight as a small sailboat. Now this giant stingray is not aggressive, but it does have a barb that it can use in self-defense. And this barb is coated in toxic mucus and is also capable of piercing human bone. Now this stingray is a prized food fish in many countries, but because of its size and its tendency to hunker down at the bottom of rivers, it's extremely hard to catch with the rod and reel. And there's many stories of this species tugging along boats and snapping line and fishing rods. And out of all the species on this list, is considered by many to be the largest freshwater fish. But that's about it for this list. As I said earlier, I did not include sturgeons because they can be found in the oceans and rivers. But if you think there's any fish I missed out, you can leave them down in the comments below as there are many other giants in our rivers and lakes that I haven't included in this list. But that's about all for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. And until next time, goodbye.